don't know if you guys know who I'm talking about, but I look like that cozy gamer girl who's on YouTube and on TikTok and Twitch. Just, she looks like this, she dresses like this, and like, ah, I kind of look like her right now. But anyway, um, oh, I just want to share this with y'all. This is Gen Mai, Ma, Gen, Gen Ma, Matcha, Gen Maicha. It's basically matcha with brown mil with brown rice, and it tastes so good. I recently went to oh my god, it tastes so good. Oh my god, um, I recently went to the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens in Boca Raton, which I had no idea existed in Florida. Like I didn't even know anything like that existed in Florida. Like Florida doesn't, to my knowledge, doesn't even have like any type of Asian town or like K town or anything like Asian related like that I've ever seen. Just like a few restaurants. But like it was so amazing to see a whole museum and the, the history about the man who like founded it and everything it was just so amazing and okay i, I want to go back they had so many cool things and i bought this tea at that um museum store so and it's really good like authentic it's so good mm. anyway um recently uh talking about that i want to talk to you guys about this thing that's been on my mind basically like if you guys know, I have struggled with driving anxiety, as some of y'all know, for many years. Um, I've just not been a fan of driving. I don't trust... Mm, it's not that I don't trust myself. And sometimes I don't because, girl, I'm daydreaming. Like, I'm not even driving. That's not safe. Like, I know that I'm out here daydreaming. If I'm daydreaming, someone who considers himself a safe driver, then I know other people are, like, out of it. And, like, I don't know. I'm just somewhere else when I'm driving. I'm spaced out. And I know other people do that too. On top of that, I have to trust that my car is completely functional, that the brakes are going to work, that the freaking, like, every turn, that I'm not going to have some sort of muscle spasm and, like, completely crash the car. Like, I have to... It's too much thinking. And you have to, at the same time, be watching out for everyone else. Pedestrians, um, motorcyclists. Oh, my God. Motorcyclists? Don't even get me started. Um, it's just so much to be looking out for. At the same time, like, I'm always scared of babies walking in the middle of the road. That is, like, such an irrational fear that I have. Like, I'm always looking for babies because I, I feel like there's babies just crawling out into the road for some reason because a lot of places here in Florida don't have fences around their house. I don't know. I just feel like there's babies in the middle of the road somewhere and I'm so scared. Like, I'm gonna... I don't want to ever end, end a life, especially driving. That would be so terrible. Lock me up. Ugh, that's so bad. Like, that's such a fear I have. Um, what, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, driving. Plus, you have to trust everyone else on the road. You have to trust that no one's crazy and that everyone else's cars are working properly and that no one's intoxic intoxicated and that everyone's gotten enough rest. Like, there's too many factors. You know, I don't trust it. When I'm driving down the street and, um, like, a regular road and then there's, like, a street that comes this way, you know, like, you, you're, you're, everyone's driving this way, and there's a street, and cars come this way, and there's a stop sign. I don't know why, but cars that come really fast and then stop terrify me. I always feel like they're just gonna go straight through, and I always slow down, and people get mad at me. They're like, why are you slowing down? You have the right of way. Yes, but, like, people are crazy. How are you guys trusting that everything's gonna work perfectly all the time? It's, it's crazy. Like, driving is so much, but I've gotten so much more confident over, like, the past couple of months, thanks to, um, thanks to my cousin who has been like pushing me and i've gotten so much more confident and i'm so happy because it's very liberating for me um who has been trapped in this little anxiety bubble my my entire life and much more confident on the road now i still get fear and i still like get frozen sometimes but um for the most part i'm good and um recently i've been driving a lot to miami which is like so unheard of for me like i couldn't even drive to sarasota which is like from my hometown to sarasota it's like 40 minutes miami's like a three and a half hour drive Plus, Miami driving is totally different than, like, small town driving. Like, it's just total. it's such a different landscape. And I'm like, uh, I just never thought that I could be at a level where I could just handle myself out there. But apparently I can. Like, apparently once I got so used to, like, turning, like, that was my biggest deal. Like, switching lanes was such a huge thing for me. I couldn't do it. Like, I needed all the space in the world. But now I'm just much more comfortable with it. And I'm much more quick about it. I don't know. I'm, I'm better now. Like, I'm just better now. Um... And if you're wondering, I prefer maps to Google Maps. I don't know why, but like maps is just more detailed and, it, and they're also like telling you the whole entire time when to turn. I don't know. I need to like test out ways too. So like, we'll see. Now that I'm a driver, I got to start doing that. Um, but I've been driving to Miami so much. And this last weekend um, on, I think, Saturday, I drove to Miami with, my, with two of my cousins, two of my younger cousins. And one of them's a really good driver. So um, I often let her take the wheel, but I'm like, no, I'll drive this time. And I was driving and I drove all the way down. Um, 
and the whole point was us to go to this k-pop event and we went and we had fun and it was fun um we ended up losing track of time like i got a message from my cousin who oh i was supposed to be using this the whole time oops i got a message from my cousin who um was like hey um do you know what time you're gonna be home because my cousin's been staying with me she's like do you know what time you're gonna be home because i want someone to be with the the cat her cat um maybe you'll see him in the background of some of this video um hey like uh what time will you be home i need someone to watch the cat while i go get my contacts um and she's been telling me for a while that she needs her contacts He's right here. <laughs> She's been telling me for a while she needs her contacts. Like, I promise this all wraps around, this all makes sense. Um, She's been telling me for a while that she, like, is on her last contact. Like, she used the same contact, like, pair for a whole week straight, which is, I think, bad. Like, you shouldn't do that. And so, um, she's been, like, reusing the same ones. And she told me she, um, she's been, she finally ordered them, but they went to her mom's house. And her mom lives in Northport, which is kind of like on the way back. Um, it's on the way back from Miami. So first I have to go through everything. Then I hit Northport, which is where my hometown, where my um, cousin's mom lives. I hope this is making sense and you guys are tracking this down. Um, the contacts are in Northport. And she wanted to me to get home, which is North uh, Sarasota, where we live, is like further on. And I was like, no, it's on the way. Let me pick them up so that you don't have to like drive down. And she's like, oh my God, thank you so much. And I'm like, of course, of course, I, like, I love you. I would totally do that. Um, and I told her, I'm like, it might be getting back late. Text me around nine to remind me. And she does. She texts me at nine o'clock, like on the dot and tells me, hey, don't forget to get the contacts. I'm like, of course. However, we were like so deep into Miami Beach and um, we were also hungry. So we sat down to dinner and um, oh my God, one thing led to another and we were, we got ice cream, like things, took a lot, a lot longer than expected. And we left Miami Beach at like a much later time than I had anticipated. I anticipated leaving at six so that I could be back around nine, which is kind of what I told my cousin. We ended up leaving so late that when I finally texted my cousin back saying, hey, just let your mom know to like be ready that I'm coming. Um, she's like, no, 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 it's so late that I don't want to wake her. And um, uh, I wish I would have known that you were coming back so late so I could have gotten the contacts myself. And I felt so unbelievably bad. Like, I didn't know that there was a time frame at what, at what point I could go pick up her contacts. But at the same time, I should have figured, like, like of course, you can't just pick them up at any time. It's not a 24-hour store. Like, you have to be there at a reasonable hour so that everyone's not asleep and you disrupt them. And I'm like, that makes total sense. I should have either told her to put it in the mailbox or, like, said to go get them herself because I was going to be late. Like, I didn't realize all of this. But at the same time, my cousin wasn't mad. My cousin wasn't upset. But I felt awful about it. And um, I ended up staying over at my sister's house. Then I came back in the morning and she had already gone to work. And I went out and bought her like a little pinata, some chocolates. I bought her like an immunity shot. I bought her like flowers and everything. Kind of like an apology to make it up to her. Cause like, she's been telling me how much, how important these contacts are to her. And she can't wait to get them because she's been waiting to like finally be able to see she has terrible vision. Uh, and how much she doesn't like glasses and I just delayed it a whole nother day for her like she was excited to finally have them and I told her I could deliver but I couldn't deliver and so you guys are probably like where the heck is this story going <laughs> but even though my I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where even though my intention was good my intention was to do a favor for my cousin I ended up delaying her and having her sit up and wait till like past midnight um not knowing whether or not I had these um contacts and she was depending on me and I want, I really ask myself sometimes, like people say it all the time, like even if your intention was good, like it's the actions that matter and it's like the impact that's important. Um, and I always kind of misunderstood that or didn't fully understand that because it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, but intentions do matter. Like um, what you have in your heart matters. But then I think about it more and more and the like more I grow and the more I experience things, I'm just like, wait, yeah, no, intention doesn't matter at the end of the day unless, um, like good intentions are great, but if the end result is not, you know, what it should have been, then it might, you might as well not had a good intention at all. But that's such an awful and terrible thing to say, but I think about it and I'm just like, I might as well, like, <sighs> I really think that if you, if intentions really did matter and the impact is not what you thought it was, was gonna be, then all that needed to happen was you trying harder. That's all that needed to happen. If your intentions were good, that's awesome. You need to put so much effort and you need to try behind all of that intention. Because if you, for example, if you give someone a gift and the intention, like that's basically where it comes from, right? Like 
oh, it's the thought that matters, it's the intention that matters. Yeah, but if you give someone a bad gift, like you might, you might as well not have gotten them a gift at all because it's not that you're hurting them. Now they have something they didn't have before, but it, it can feel, it feels like burdening them with something. Like you're giving them something and expecting, I don't know what you're expecting, a thank you or something or whatever, or a gift back. Um, or to be in good graces with them, but if the intention was like not thought out enough and you ended up giving them a gift that um, is useless or is useless to them, it's, it doesn't cater to them or it doesn't really like matter, um, it, it, it's, it's just a bad gift. And like the intentions are always good, but like let's try harder, you know? And it's, it's good to know for next time, blah, 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 that you could like do something different. Um, like when you say something out of turn and the intention was good but it came off wrong that's another example like these things scare me because it's like it's like my intentions have always and forever been good but if they don't come off that way then what am i doing with all of my intention what am i doing like it, it really is like not like ah, uh, and it's not about like asking for forgiveness later or making it up to someone later it's not really about that either um but I do think that says something about your intention as well. I think like if you had a good intention and it didn't come through like you wanted it to and you go out of your way to make it up or to put more effort in, that says something about your intention because no one can really see like what's in your heart. No one can really see what you were thinking or not thinking. Um, all they can see is how it impacted them or how it burdened them or how it hurt them. Um, so all you can do is like apologize and try your best to put actions behind good intention um and think a little bit more um because when like youtubers apologize and things like that and they say like that wasn't my intention um you know i genuinely believe them and it's just it's where thought could have really saved them it's where having a little bit more time to think before we speak is like what was best and the intention was careless and i try my hardest not to do that myself i'm always trying to like if 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 um if my intentions are truly good then i'm gonna put at least my all my heart and soul into it like for example one time this is crazy one time my my dad received a gift and he kind of like we me and my dad were kind of at odds at this moment in our life we were not like on the bestest term. We're much better now, but like we were not on the bestest terms. Um, and I was living in his house and he had gotten a gift and he wanted me to like, I don't even know what you, emboss it, engrave it. I don't know what you call it when you put a name on something. He's like, Joe, you're a painter. You can put your name on it. Um, you can put my name on it. He, my dad loves having his name on things. And he really just like kind of looked at me and volunteered me for this thing without really asking me. And I was like, yeah, I guess and he kind of left it in my room and he's like yeah just please put my name on it or like just put my name on it blah blah, blah. like it to me i got the whole entire thing felt like do this like i felt like i was being told what to do um and i really just didn't want to do this for him like i didn't want to take the time i didn't want to like try i'm also not a calligrapher like like i didn't i didn't really want to do this like he's asked me to do th art things for him before just because he knows i paint um and i don't really put all of my effort into it um i remember just kind of writing his name in sharpie or pencil or something really fast and just putting it back and 1000 percent, my intention was not good i don't really think i had an intention i think my intention was let me finish this as quickly as i can and just like move on with my life like i had next to zero thoughts i just wrote his name and put it back like i wasn't thinking and a little while later like when he got home that night um, I was just watching TV with my sister and he like walks into my room, which he never does. Like, that's the one thing I can like be grateful for. Like my dad never walked into my room unless he had something to discuss with me, like disciplinary wise. Like those were the few times. Um, but he came into my room and he was like, what is this? And I just remember being like, I did what you told me to do. And he's like, this is such poor work. And it was, it was like, uh, despite me not being a calligrapher, I'm not good with like handwriting or anything like that. I, I, you could definitely see there was no intention. There was no trying there. Um, and he was so upset. He just like went on and being like, this is so, this is so careless. This is so like, um, not thought out. This just, you know what this says about you? You know what this is telling me? This is telling me you don't care. This is telling me. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I kind of don't. 
But of course I didn't say that loud. I kept defending the fact that I'm not a calligrapher. I, I just, and my sister too, she's like, hey, she doesn't do writing like that. Like that's not her skill set. And at the same time, I knew I could have done a much better job. I knew I could have put real effort into it. Um, but I just didn't care to. Like I didn't, I knew I was gifting it to someone who at the time I wasn't in good terms with. And um, I just, I just wanted to get it done. I was like, why'd you put this on me? I didn't ask for this. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I kind of said yes. So like the fact that um, I did such a poor job, this really embarrassed me. I, I totally understood what he was saying in the moment. I was like, dang, I really did. I really did like mess that up. I, I this fault is lies with me. <laughs> and I kind of looked at my work and I was like, dang, I wouldn't be proud to say that I did this. And my dad was basically saying, whatever you do, do it with good intention and do it with hard work because do it with hard work because this doesn't speak well of you or your 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 skills or your effort whatever like this this is a very poor job i'm very like disappointed and i totally like despite me not being his biggest fan i immediately thought to myself he's right he's right i did do wrong i did fail him and i failed this project i like did not intend for this huge reaction of course but i didn't try and even though i didn't intend for bad things necessarily I, like i didn't intend for anything at all like i intended him to grab it look at it and just go on about his day and not really say much about it else ever again like it really just made me think like wow joe you need to like put i kind of made like a little decision there and i and i keep trying to strive for it every day whatever job i've decided to take up and do sometimes i'll look for the easy way out because i'm not entirely my heart's not in, into it 100 percent. and i'm not saying i need to go be above and beyond for everything that i do but i definitely want the majority of the things that i do to have my um my effort and my strength and my skills in it and i want to do my best work whenever i can i want to be proud of the things that i do and i want to put like i want to work hard like I want I want the things that I've done to speak well of me. Um, like, I don't want anyone to look at something I've done and be like, oh, yeah, she didn't care about that. You know, I want to try hard. Uh, and sometimes we, I can coast by and sometimes I don't put all my effort into things that I'm doing. But I've learned, especially from the people around me, from that lesson, that I need, um, despite my intentions being what they were, um, what speaks are my actions, what speaks is my impact. And I need to, like, put... put more <laughs> put more effort into that um yeah um i i don't i don't know i just really i don't know how this f came up between all of the things that i've been talking about but this weekend i really just kind of like and again my cousin was so happy with the gift she's like you didn't need to do all that and i know i didn't like you don't have to make it up to someone whenever you like fail them or um even make them upset like you don't have to like like try to buy their love back like that's definitely not um i just that's definitely not what you do but like like i said with actions like you need to put intention into them and i just wanted to like give her a little there was a lot of reasons giving her a going away present because she leaves in a couple of days um and giving her like and her birthday's coming up and valentine's day coming up and you know i just love her and i just wanted to be like hey i didn't i couldn't do this for you but here's a little like token of my appreciation um, I want to make your life easier and I just inconvenienced, inconvenienced you. Um, and I'm not saying I'm going to do that every single time. I know I talk a lot. <laughs> oh God, guys, my hair, look how bright it is up here. It's like a completely, look, that's all the growth. My entire head used to be this color. Look at all this growth. All the, like literally, I remember when my bangs had this color. Wait a minute, why don't my bangs have that? Oh, they they kind of have the color at the end there. I don't know. That's so odd. Um, but yeah. Um, what what was I talking about? Yeah, guys, intention. <laughs> um, so if you ever find yourself in a situation where your intention didn't ma match your impact then it's a lesson in trying harder and especially for things that matter or things that you may not think matter but you know actually do it's the little things you know um yeah it's an it's definitely a an invite to like give it more thought next time um you don't have to get it right every time but you know 
you apologize, you move on, and then you try harder next time. You know, with everything you do, do it well. <laughs> everything you do, do it well. Um, and if you believe in God, do it for God. And he would want you to do it well. So um, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. I don't know why I had that on my mind. But, like, it was this whole weekend and, like, having that, having just gone through that. And, uh, and you know, she's one of my favorite people. So I'm glad I got to, like, I get to try harder in the future. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Te amo. Bye. Oh, my God. I completely forgot about my tea. That is so good. Ah. Uh. I genuinely wish I could share this with you. This is what the tea bag looks like. Oh my god. This is what the tea bag looks like. Ooh, there's some orange in there. I don't know if you can see the orange. Not in fifth. Okay, I have some other work to do. Just then, bye. Bye.